So what's the definition of pleasure according to the Hasidic view of the world? Pleasure doesn't mean let's eat a great ice cream, you know? It's so good. That's animalistic pleasure. And a human being is not a better animal. It's a complete different type of creation. So what's pleasure? Pleasure is when a creature can go really beyond himself, herself. And I don't mean like go out of your comfort zone so you're going to be a better person. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about really going beyond your own type of creation. What does that mean? There are four types of creation in the world. There's inanimate things like mineral, stones. Then there are plants, vegetables. Then there are animals. And then there are human beings. Each one of these creations really reaches, reaches its highest point as a creation when it really goes in, gets included in the next level. But a plant is not a really a stone that grows, a mineral that grows. No, it's an infinite, complete, different and higher type of creation. So when a mineral gets absorbed by a plant, it becomes plant, it really goes beyond mineral. Being mineral starts being plant. When a plant is eaten by an animal, stops being a plant, it becomes animal. And when an animal is eaten by a human being, stops being regular animal and becomes human being. Again, a human being is not a type of animal. Maybe some people behave like animals, but that's a different pro problem. A human being, it's a completely higher type of creation. It's the highest type of creation that exists in the world that God made. Now, how does a human being really go beyond himself? Like, how does it really get pleasure out of being? There's nothing higher than a human being in the creation. So how do you go beyond yourself? And the answer is, when the human being gets included into God, then it gets the highest level of pleasure that it can ever be to be something that you really are not, <laughs> to go beyond yourself. Now, how does it work like in practical terms and in simple terms? And the idea is like this. Look, there's a very simple type of pleasure that even animals have. That means to eat something, to reproduce yourself. Animals also do that. And they have pleasure out of that. It's like a very mundane type of pleasure. Very, in Yiddish you say, grub. Grub means ordinary, really. If that's like the fire of your life, it's just eating a good ice cream. Like really, quote unquote, reproducing myself, that's pleasure in life. You're not better than an animal. You know what? You were created as a, something that is infinitely higher than an animal, and you're just behaving like an animal. That's not good. That's one type of pleasure, the lowest one. Mundane things, material things, etc. Then there's a higher level, a voice. Like you can hear a beautiful, sweet voice, and you say, oh, this is so nice. This generates pleasure on me. Then you have a higher level of pleasure, an emotion. Like a person that loves doing good to others, when he really does good to others, he feels so good. You feel pleasure. And that is a higher level. Even when your nature doesn't really go with that behavior, but you're able to go against your own nature to do something that, it, something that is really, I mean, MS in Hebrew, really, truly good. And goodness is not according to what you understand. Goodness is a, like an objective thing. If there's a person screaming in the 10th floor, throw me, throw me, because I want to die, etc., etc., and comes a quote-unquote good guy and says, oh, really? You want somebody to push you? I can do that. Boom, you push him. I have such a big pleasure out of that. He wanted to be pushed. I just pushed him. That's not goodness. That's not really good. It might seem to this guy that this, this is good, and you might think that actually, actually you did a good thing, but that's not really good. No. So, Again, there's pleasure in an emotion, and the highest level of pleasure in an emotion is to do what's really good, beyond to what you really think is good. And then there's a higher level, wisdom. When a person learns 
something and understands mind, under, not emotion, understands with the mind. It's a specific idea. It gets pleasure out of understanding. And that's a human pleasure. Eating, animal pleasure. A voice, eh, it's much better, but it's still mundane things. Emotions, it's a, bit, a little bit better, but animals also have emotions, you know? Dogs, actually in Hebrew, you say dog, is called kelev, which actually three letters, chof, lame, the base, kelev. And our sages say in the Jewish, Jew, Jewish mysticism, a kelev is kuloi leif, all heart in Hebrew. All heart, emotions, can even die for its master, you know? Okay, when you learn something, that's a human pleasure. Understanding is human pleasure. But there's even a higher level. When you understand, when you learn God, you get a godly understanding that's going beyond yourself. That's the real pleasure a human being can attain and can reach. Being included within God's own wisdom by learning his wisdom, which is Torah, which is the scriptures, and by learning the written Torah, the oral Torah, whatever part, it's it's proper for you, for Jews this, for non-Jews that. Okay, that's a different question. But the point is, by being included into godly wisdom, you really get beyond your own human wisdom. And that's the real pleasure and the real definition of pleasure that a human being can ever attain. Did you try it? 